Hey guys, and welcome back to this week's IMG Tales video. My name is Tara Jamison. I'm a final year medical student at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, and I talk about my life in medical school. I also make music every single Sunday, but this week's video is all about the USMLEs. So I've done a couple of videos on these in the past, um, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about kind of an overview of them, how I prepared for them, some changes that have happened, and kind of my overall tips and tricks for them. So let's get into that video. The USMLEs, the United States Medical Licensing Exams. Um, they are a series of three, what used to be four exams, which allow you to practice medicine in the US. They're broken down into the USMLE Step 1, USMLE Step 2 CK, uh, the now discontinued USMLE Step 2 CS, so this is no longer part of the USMLE exam series, and then finally the USMLE Step 3. I have successfully <laughs> taken the USMLE Step 1 and USMLE Step 2 CK. If you want more info on kind of my scores and how I did on the exams and like how kind of my USMLEs fit into my application, I would check out uh, the video. I'll put it up here um, in one of these corners for you guys to check out. It'll be like my match video. It has all of my stats that were on my application. These are the exams that you have to take to become a licensed physician in the US. You cannot practice medicine in the US without having passed either the USMLEs or the Comlex if you're a DO student. I'm not gonna talk about Comlex. I know nothing about them. I did the USMLEs. USMLE step one is kind of your basic sciences pre-clinical exam. So it's supposed to cover all of the material in medical school that you learn before you start doing rotations in the hospital while you're in your pre-clinical years. So it covers anatomy, physiology, pathology, microbiology, kind of it's a catch-all of everything, pharmacology. It's a massive test. I've done a few videos on it, which I will link either up here or down below for you guys to see. So I'm not gonna talk about the USMLE step one a ton. What I will say is that since I took the exam, it's gone from being a three digit score to being pass fail. Now, some people say this is a great thing. Some people say this is a terrible thing. I don't really have a huge opinion on it. I think it just means that the USMLE step two CK's score is going to matter more and that the USMLE step one, when you look at it, it doesn't really tell you if you're going to be a great doctor or not. It's, it's more just, can you study for this test? Can you pass it? Can you retain all of the information on this? What I used to study were, was, I've, I've talked about it in other videos, but USMLE RX, Cram Fighter. Um, I used Sketchy Micro, Sketchy Farm. I used Pixarize. I kind of, I used everything. And that, that was kind of, I would say my downfall. While I think it's great to try a bunch of things and to use a bunch of resources, you need a way to organize them. So I would have used Cram Fighter sooner. And then also because you need a way to organize all this information, I think it's fine to try a bunch of things, but then to narrow it down and really stick to a couple of resources that are gonna work best for you. That's kind of the USMLE step one in a nutshell. Then there's the USMLE step two CK. CS no longer exists. We don't take that test anymore, so I'm not going to talk about it because I didn't do it. But the USMLE step two CK is very similar to the USMLE step one in the sense that it's a multiple choice test that's about nine hours long. It's nine hours and the USMLE step one is eight hours. It covers kind of your, some, some kind of more physiology, anatomy, but it's mostly pathology and clinical knowledge that you're starting to incorporate. So it's about kind of what's the best treatment, what's the best next step. It's a lot of those types of questions. And what I used to study for that was the Dorian deck on Anki, um, which I've linked in my Instagram bio, but I'll also link down below as well. I used that, I used Cram Fighter, I used UWorld, and I used Online Med Ed, which is a free website. I'm so glad when stuff is free. Um, they do offer some paid subscription stuff, but I stuck to the free version. And there are videos that you use to help you study. You reinforce your knowledge with Anki. There was, I did try the USMLE First Aid for Step 2 CK book. It wasn't as helpful to me as First Aid was for USMLE Step 1. So I didn't end up using it all that much. So that's kind of the USMLE Step 2 CK. Finally, in the final exam of our USMLE exams is the USMLE Step 3 which I have not taken yet, but I am currently studying for. So the USMLE step three 
in comparison to the USMLE step one and step two, it's a two day test with day one being all multiple choice and day two being a mix of multiple choices, multiple choice and simulated cases. So to help me prepare for this, I haven't taken it yet. I don't know what the test is like. I'm currently using UWorld. I'm currently using Anki with a deck from Reddit that I'll link below, CCS cases and online med ed. So those are kind of the core resources that I'm using to help me prepare for this test. Um, I haven't taken it yet, so I can't really tell you guys kind of what it's like, but stay tuned. I'll do like a post USMLE step three video. We'll see how that goes. So those are the USMLEs. The, the big things that have changed since I started in medical school is that due to COVID-19, CS, step two CS is no longer um, a part of the exam process. It's been replaced by the pathways. I don't know how long those are gonna be in place. I don't know if they're ever going to bring step two CS back. And then with USMLE step one going to pass fail, I think it puts more pressure on the USMLE step two CK. And I think something that is important, especially for IMGs like myself to know, is that I think it makes it much more important for you to take it before you apply to residency. So for example, I took step two CK in June of 2021, which was before the application deadline for residency in September. So I think it's really important that you take it before so you have your score um, so that you can go in and say, look, I put a really strong foot forward. I have a score coming in, even though you technically don't need it until, you technically don't need a score until match day. I think for IMGs like myself, it could be really beneficial to have kind of that metric to go and be compared against for. Not that I think that scores are actually really important in the application as a whole, but I think to some programs, some programs they matter, some programs they don't. So where do we go from here? I took the USMLE step one between my second and third year. Uh, in August of 2020, I took the USMLE Step 2 CK in June, just after I finished my third year. Um, and I'm planning on taking the USMLE Step 3 this June, uh, just before I start residency. So what are my takeaways? I think it's important now with USMLE Step 1 being pass fail, um, if you want to have a numeric metric that you can be compared against, I don't think it would be a bad idea if you're ready, if you feel ready to take the exam, to try and take the USMLE Step 2 CK before you submit your application so that you have a score that programs can look at when they're kind of evaluating you as an applicant. And study as hard as you can and just remember, one score isn't your whole life. One score isn't gonna decide if you're a great physician or not. One score does not define who you are as a person. They're three numbers, and those three numbers have nothing to do with your self-worth and who you are. So just remember that through this whole process. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Um, I got the idea for this video from a poll I did over on my Instagram, so if you're not following me there, you should be. Uh, I'll have that linked down in the description below. And let me know what you want me to talk about next time or if you have other questions about the USMLEs. Until then, I will see you guys all later. Bye guys.